Well, the football community certainly is mourning at the moment following yesterday's tragic news from the PSL side. Joining me now is Richard Spey, co-coach for City Manasaka. So very good afternoon and thanks for chatting to us here on Newsroom Africa. Firstly, our condolences to you and the team. Yeah, thanks, Waylon. Um, very, very uh, traumatic time uh, for the team, you know, for all of us. Um, very, very difficult day yesterday. Not, not something easy to to witness and to take in and to to process, even to comprehend. But um, yeah, massive, massive loss, um, and and especially from from an unbelievable human being like like Pepe, um, who was only 29 years old, who loved the game so so much and had so much to offer. Um, so yeah, it is going to be be a process, you know, uh, to heal and and to move forward. After hearing what the assistant coach of Kaiser Chiefs had to say, Dylan Shepherd, have you gone back? And was there any history of uh, medical issues that were a cause for concern? No, um, no, no history, no no history of issues. Um, certainly nothing reported. Uh, on the day of training yesterday, no signs of, of you know, tight chest, chest pains, uh, cold, uh, fever in, in any way. He, um, he trained yesterday the way he played against Kaiser Chiefs on Saturday. He was an absolute warrior in that game. And, you know, as coaches, we often say to, to players, um, you know, approach this game and play as if it was your last game. That's certainly what he did on Saturday. And that's how I approached training yesterday. He was unbelievable. He was a bundle of energy. And, uh, um, yeah, it is just something that, that happened during training. Um, the only injury that he's ever had before then, obviously, was when I arrived in preseason, which was a, a serious knee injury. But, of course, he got over that. He recovered be before his time. So, you know, the, the, the two issues are are very, very different. Uh, one is a contact injury and the other one is something that, as I said to you, is, cannot be explained, certainly at this point in time, while, while we wait for doctors and, and police reports. Coach, we have seen some reports from some of the players uh, just explaining what actually happened at training. Can you maybe just take us through what happened? Yeah, it's what seemed as a normal training day, you know, uh, started with with uh, the standard warm-up and then progressing through different, you know, training drills. And uh, as I said, it was very, it was, it was an intense session. It was competitive. There was lots of laughter and joy, even from Spepe, his particular team, you know, the team with the red bibs on were in unbelievable form and, and giving the opposition team a real hiding in, in, in the small-sided game. Um, and then, uh, you know, we went for a, the players went for a water break and then entering the last part of, of, of the training session, which was really the last 15 minutes. And they were going to play a transition game that they absolutely love, you know, that brings out the, the competitiveness and the joy. And, and yeah, as I say, you know, he was very vocal as he normally was um, and before we started that last draw we were you know just waiting for the last players to come across from the water break and you know the next picture I saw was him seated on on the grass um, sitting in an upright position obviously been standing before that um, some players I think helped him you know and and what from a distance where I was standing at that point you know seemed like a player that may have been a little bit fatigued or just needed a little bit more water, juice, you know, banana or whatever it might be that he needed. And um, it was evident as as a few minutes ticked on that he wasn't going to get up. And um, he was soon surrounded, of course, by all the players. But by then, you know, the physio was already there. And then everything was coming off, boots, socks, you know, the, the spirit of the team and the togetherness and the willingness for everyone to jump in and help. And then, you know, there were signs of very, very heavy breathing, struggle to, he, he really struggled to breathe. And it's, you know, it, it, it just became even more difficult. Uh, starting, you know, the pulse was, you know, not as strong anymore. And um, while all that was happening, 
the, the, the team manager was there in a flash with his car on the field, you know, quicker than any, any, any ambulance could have got there. And, you know, we all assisted and, and put Pepe in the, in the back seat comfortably with support, with, with the physio, with, you know, a couple of guys, um, from the technical team in the car and, uh, off they took him to the private hospital, which was literally around the corner, maybe five, six minutes away. And, um, yeah, the reports were, you know, so far that, um, he, he possibly didn't even make it there. So there was a rapid, rapid downturn in, in just everything, you know, and what seems as he's just, his whole system, his whole body shutting down, and it's it, it's hard to believe. But I'm talking I'm talking minutes here, um, literally, you know. Um, it is an incredible and really tragic, tragic story. Richards Bay FC yeah. co-coach Vasily Manasakis, thank you very much for your brief time here on Newsroom Africa. You'll certainly share the details, and the team will share the details of the uh, funeral that will be taking place. The PSL has already announced, Stephen and uh, Tembekile, that uh, they will be having a moment of silence uh, before the uh, DSTV Disky Challenge matches this weekend, as well as the Nedbank Cup matches that will be playing out this current weekend. Thank you very much, Coach, for your time. And that's how we come to the end of your sport in this hour.